Switching gears entirely, the general hunting season for elk and deer is still two weeks away, but hunters do have a chance to hunt this weekend. That's right. Antelope season opens Saturday, and we take a closer look at the fastest land animal in North America this week in Fish and Wildlife. This Week in Fish and Wildlife, sponsored by your local Montana Toyota dealers. Thursday morning time once again for This Week in Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we're on the road at Region 3 headquarters. Uh, joining us this morning, uh, biologist uh, Julie Cunningham. Julie, we're talking about these little uh, creatures behind us. Super interesting. Uh, the big reason we're talking about it is the season opens Saturday, doesn't it? Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the antelope. Um, uh, a really unique creature, uh, maybe more unique than many of us think about. Let's just talk a little bit about that. Uh, antelope season does start before deer and elk season. Um, some people might wonder why. It's because mm. antelope are very different than deer and elk. Mm. They uh, breed earlier in the year. Um, they have their babies the same time of year, though, so they have a long gestation so the little babies can hit the ground running. Um, pronghorn will actually shed their uh, horn sheaths, and they shed in November. So if you're a hunter out in the field and you want to grab your buck and drag it out by the horn, it could come off in your hand. Mm. Um, that's one of the reasons we end pronghorn season earlier than deer and elk, and it's so that um, hunters can readily tell the difference between a buck and a doe. But a sharp-eyed hunter can still tell the difference by the nice black markings on the pronghorns. Uh, male pronghorn space. I, I think the, the information you sent me about this, how unique they really are. There's not really another creature around that is like the pronghorn antelope, is it? The pronghorn are pretty special. They are kind of the last relics of an ancient lineage that developed in the Miocene 20 million years ago. <laughs> they survived the latest ice ages. Um, the, our, our one species is the only extant member, the only living member of its whole family. Uh, its closest relative is actually giraffes and okapis. Mm -hmm. They're not an antelope at all, and they're nowhere nearly as related to deer and elk as people might think they are. The ancient predators they evolved with include a North American cheetah, and that's why they evolved this amazing speed. Pronghorn can run up to 60 miles an hour. Now, these predators are still extinct, but the pronghorn survived. Um, the thing that fascinates me is, as I know, Lewis and Clark, when they came out here, they thought they were goats. They thought they were ibex or something like that. The closest relative is the giraffe. It is. Um, yeah, the pronghorn uh, evolved. North America looked totally different at this time millions of years ago. There were lions, there were dire wolves, there were cheetahs, and so th there were also lots and lots of different species of pronghorn. But these guys are its last surviving relatives. So taxonomists, the people who classify animals to species, had uh, puzzled over the pronghorn for many years because it is so unique. But as our fossil record has expanded, ancient pronghorn used to have four different horns of all different kinds of amazing shapes. There there was a whole array of pronghorn. Exciting to know this is kind of the last relic of this ancient lineage. It's a really unique species, so I hope people can take a minute to appreciate how cool this animal is when they go out and enjoy their opportunity, and uh, I'll be among them. <laughs> I've got two antelope tags also. That's perfect. Again, Julie Cunningham joining us this morning. Uh, pronghorn antelope uh, season kicking off uh, Saturday, uh, the general hunting season for that. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. And that's This Week in Fish and Wildlife. This Week in Fish and Wildlife was sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places.